This is the SparkFun Artemis Open Log Data Logger. And I'm going to be showing you the basics of how to set this up as a standalone data logger to measure temperature. Now this guy has a nine axis inertial measurement unit um, and that has accelerometers, gyroscope, and compass built in. So this guy can track itself in space and know how it's moving in space. We're not actually going to be using any of those features, so I'm going to be turning those off. Um, it also has as part of that chip a temperature sensor which can be used to calibrate the IMU unit, but we can also just read the current temperature of this board. I think the actual chip is that guy right there. That's what's reading the temperature. Now I'm going to be using this to monitor water in a lake, and so we don't want to get this Thing wet. Um, so I'm actually going to be connecting a second temperature chip. This is the um, TMP117. It's the kind of high accuracy temperature chip. It's that little black thing right there. Um, this is also from SparkFun. And um, these two guys connect together using SparkFun's cabling system called their Quick System, which is basically a way to connect the I2C bus from this board to that board. Um, so to connect those, you're going to need a quick cable like this. You could theoretically solder some wires from some of these pins over to some of those pins and connect them that way. Um, but for now, it's a lot easier to buy one of these little quick connector cables. Um, and so all you have to do is you look for the holes at the top there. Those holes go on the top here and you plug it in. And this board has two of them, so you can daisy chain a couple of sensors together. And the nice thing about this particular board is the software on the open logger automatically detects that sensor and just starts logging data from it automatically. Um, there are other temperature sensors and quick boards on the SparkFun website, which this guy is not programmed to automatically work with. So this one is guaranteed to work with it from the documentation. Now, if you're saving data, you need to have something to save data into. And this guy has a card slot for a micro SD card. Um, I recommend buying a brand name one, since presumably the data is the important part of your project here. Um, and you don't want to be using some generic card. And this is just a 32 gigabyte micro SD card. Now, to connect this up to your computer, to set the clock, and to configure it to log data the way you want it to, you're going to need a USB-C cable, um, and then the other end has to plug into your computer, so either USB-A or another USB-C, um, and that will just plug into this guy. Now, for standalone operation, not connected to a computer, you will need a power source for this guy. You can just plug it into, like, a power bank that has a USB-C output. Um, you could plug it into a solar panel that powers over USB-C, but they also have a JST connector for a single cell lithium ion battery. And one of the nice things about this board is it has a battery management chip that will charge a battery with power coming in via the USB port, um, and it will also run the board off of the battery. Um, I bought this from SparkFun. Um, you can buy them from other sellers as well. And so that would just plug in here. And we'll do that a little bit later after we configure this with the computer. So when you plug this guy into a USB port on your computer, it will have some power lights that turn on and some flickering going on that means, hey, it's logging data and connected to a serial port. Perhaps the hardest part of this whole project is figuring out what serial port it's connected to and finding a terminal software that'll work well with it. Um, so I'm on Linux, I'm using TIO, TO for the terminal, um, and mine happens to pop up on TTY USB 0. If you're on Windows or a Mac, it'll appear as a different serial port number. Um, most computers have the drivers for the CH3400 um, USB to serial chip that's on this board just pre-installed. So you plug it in, it should just appear as a serial port. If you have an older version of Windows, you might have to download and install the drivers. Um, on my Ubuntu Linux thing, I had something that was kind of interfering with that serial port, so I had to close that down first before I could use this. You can look at the video description for some more textual information about that. So when you connect to this, 
it says, hey, you're connected, and it suddenly just starts streaming data. So you have this screen of data. Um, and so you know that it's working, but you can't really see too much here. Um, it's going by pretty quick. And so if you look at the front here, they have a real-time clock, but it's set to January 1st, 2000, um, and the time is counting up. So by default, the real-time clock hasn't been set yet. Now to access a menu, you just need to push a button, and it'll pop up a menu, and you can configure lots of things. So the first thing I'm going to configure is the clock. Um, and so that is under the to configure timestamp. And you can see if you stop and think for a while, it'll go back to logging data. So here, we go to to configure timestamp. I hit it. It says, hey, log the date enabled, log the time enabled. Um, you can manually set the RTC date. So you push four to do that. And it says, hey, what's the year? What's the current month? What's the current day? And now we have the date set, but you have to set the time as well, 24 hour time um, or 12 hour time. We're gonna do number six, manually set the RTC clock. And so the current hour for me is 11 and it is 39 minutes. And I don't know the second, so I'm just going to say, hey, 45 seconds, press enter. Um, so I'm accurate to a minute here. If you need to be more accurate, you'll have to look at the seconds. Um, and then you can hit X to exit. You can hit X to return to logging. And now it's logging the data, and the date and time are at least within minutes and hours correct. So I'm going to configure the IMU logging. And right now, it's enabled and logging the accelerometer and the gyro and the magnometer and the temperature. So if you're looking at this output, there's a whole bunch of things in there, which are the accelerometer and the gyro. And so if I move this around, some of these numbers will change as things get detected as motion. Um, if you're looking at detect motion, that's all great data. I'm not. So I'm going to configure the IMU. And I'm going to say, hey, disable the accelerometer logging. And then I'm going to disable the gyro logging. I'm going to disable the magnometer logging, which is number four. Now, I am going to leave the temperature logging enabled because temperature is useful to me. Um, and so here you can see we have the date, the time, um, and then we have the temperature in centigrade. So it's 29 degrees centigrade. And if I put my finger on this chip and hold it there, it's gone up to 31, 32. Um, so you can see you know, the temperature is rising up there. Um, there's another number back here, which is a Hertz refresh rate. You can ignore that number. Okay, so you can configure the serial logging and the analog logging. So if you have this guy connected to a serial port or some analog pins, you can log data from those. We're not doing that. Um, and there's also configure power options. You can see that you have to read that menu because it, it automatically goes back to logging if you don't do anything. So in the power options, you can save power by turning off the quick bus between readings. So if you take, do slow readings, you can save a little power. And you can also have it detect batteries. You can have the power LED turned off during sleep to save a little power, that type of thing. Um, you can see it jump back to the main menu because no user input was, was detected. Um, so I am going to look at the terminal output. And here we can say, do we log the micro SD card? By default, it's enabled. We're going to leave it there. Log to terminal by default enabled. We'll say yes. Now set this log rate in Hertz. So it's doing 10 a second. So I want to change that down to something slower. So I'm going to initially say one a second. Um, and so now you can see if I'm logging, it's doing one a second. Now the only downside of turning this down to a slow speed is that when you want to get back to the menu and you press a button, it will only do that if it's currently logging something. And so if you set that to really slow, like 10 seconds, you might have to wait 10 seconds to get back to the menu to update things. Now, um, so this guy already has the SD card plugged into it, and it is logging the temperature from the chip there. Now I want to log the temperature from this chip as well. So what we're going to do is unplug this so it's not powered. So if you had a battery on it, you'd have to take the battery off. Um, so it's disconnected, not powered. And then we can just plug in this quick wire to the quick port. 
and that guy goes in there. Now these two boards are connected. They'll get data and power over these four lines. And when I plug this guy back into my laptop, it will automatically detect um, the devices. So it detected the temperature TMP117 ARN line. It's at address 48, which is the default address for this guy. So if you want to install more than one guy, you have to put them on different addresses or use a MUX to basically put them on different I2C buses. So now we're logging data and the only difference is we have one extra piece of data. So we have the um, temperature in C from the sensor here as well as the sensor there. And so this one here Let's see, um, we have one that says 29 centigrade and one that says 25 centigrade. I believe this is the 25 centigrade. I'm gonna put my finger over it. Um, now it's jumped up to 28, 29, 30. So that number there has gone up. Now they have a H that says print the sensor helper text and then return to logging. So if you push H, you can see there's a header and there's real time clock date, time, IMU degrees centigrade, and then just degrees centigrade, which is from this sensor here. And there's also the output hertz, which we can ignore right now. So that's all you need to do to make a logger. And right now, in addition to logging the data out to the terminal so we can see it on the terminal, it's opened a file, a text file, a CSV file in this um, micro SD card, and it's saving the data to that card. So if you provide it power with USB, um, it will record the temperature both from this chip and from the temperature sensor on the IMU chip there. Um, and so it's just logging data right now. And if you want to log data once per second, you're configured. Now, if you want to log data at a slower rate to save power, there's a couple of things you'll want to do. Um, so first of all, we probably want to go and edit the power savings first. So that's number seven here. Um, and we're going to say, turn off the quick bus if the power readings are longer than two seconds. And then we're not going to power the lead during sleep. So we're gonna turn that off to disabled. Um, now, if you had a battery, you might play with your low voltage detection on the battery, but I'm not doing that just quite yet. So we've set this to sleep if the sensor reads are you know, more than two seconds apart. Um, so we're going to go to the terminal to set log rate in seconds between readings, which is currently one. So I hit five, and now I can say, hey, let's do 20 seconds between readings. And so right now it is going to return to logging. And you might notice it logged two pieces of data and then it went to sleep. So the lights turned off and there's no real visible indication that it's doing anything. Now it is maintaining the um, serial port connection over the USB cable, so my terminal hasn't dropped the terminal connection. There, the lights turned on, it powered up the bus, it took a reading, and then it turned off again. Um, and so right now it's drawing a lot less current than when it's powered on and running. So basically this low power sleep state doesn't take too much power, although it does take a little bit of power with the USB bus and the chip. And there it turned on and it's doing things again. So it's going very slowly and logging data, you know, every 20 seconds. Now, if I push enter, here, nothing happens because the chip is not really active. And so I have to wait until we have the chip turn on to get that menu back. Um, and you can see there, I pushed enter a few times, but it did not actually um, pop up the menu because I wasn't pushing enter when the chip was on. And so this is annoying when you're trying to configure things. So you generally want to set your long timeout, you know, when you're done configuring everything else. So now I have to sit here and I was pressing enter several times and then I got the menu up. And so now I can say, hey, I'm gonna configure the terminal. And instead of doing 20 seconds between, I can go back to, you know, one second between. And so now when I am um, logging and so forth, it will log every second. And because one second is more than the two seconds between reads, it's not even bothering to power down the bus. And it's not powering down the bus, it's not powering down the chip. So at any point I can get a menu back. Um, so I'm going to set it back to do every 20 seconds. Um, and so now 
it's set to do every 20 seconds. And if I unplug this from the computer, it turns off and I'm disconnected. But if I were to plug this into a power source, it would start logging once every 20 seconds. So for example, this might be where your battery would come into play. Um, so we're gonna plug this battery into this board here through the JST connector. Now there is a reset button. You can push the reset button and it turns on. Um, it reset and it started working. There's a red light here. And it is not currently logging. Now it just shut itself down again. So when you hit that reset button, it turns on and it sits there for just a little while, you know, waiting for a connection on the USB port, waiting for somebody to type something. And if it doesn't get anything, it will start logging. Um, and so you saw it light up and then turn off again. It was logging. We're going to have to wait 20 more seconds. And in 20 seconds, the light should come on. It'll log some data. There it goes. And then it turns off again. So right now, these two guys are independently um, just logging data onto the micro SD card. And you never really need to use a computer again at this point. Um, you can simply unplug the power cable take out the micro SD card um, and read the data off of the micro SD card. Now I do wish there was a power switch on this board where you could turn the power off as opposed to having to unplug the battery to remove the power. Now you're not really supposed to plug or unplug sensors or take this SD card in or out while it's powered. And so if it's plugged into a battery here, unless you've added a switch between the battery and this guy here, um, you're going to need to unplug that before you make changes to the hardware. So I like having a little pair of needle nose pliers to grab this white connector and make pulling it out easy. You can do it with fingernails, but it's just a lot easier with a pair of pliers. So now that that's out, we can push this card in, pop it out, and then load this data onto a computer, anything that reads a text CSV file. All right, so I've put this micro SD card into my computer, and I just have data log 000, 0001, 0002. And so our last log from this last session is right in there. And that's when I plugged in power from the battery and started logging once per second. Um, and so if you look at the one before that, it's probably when I was playing with it powered by the USB-C. And so, you know, there's all the data there. Now there's also some device settings in a text file here. And so it says, hey, there's a temperature sensor TP117 um, and it has log equals one, which means turn it on and log the temperature is yes, do that thing. Um, so you can you know configure each device independently that's on the I2C bus. And then there's the settings for this guy here. So you have all those there. Now, presumably you could edit the text file here and then put it back in the um, device and it would update those settings from the text file so you don't have to use the menuing system. So if I want to open one of these data logs in something like Excel, um, I'm going to rename the file so instead of a TXT extension, it has a CSV extension. Um, and then I'm just going to say, hey, I want to open this thing with LibreOffice. And so it says, hey, it looks like comma separated files. Say, okay, let's import this. Um, and we're going to have here a set of data with the header at the top that says, hey, here's the date and time, the degrees centigrade from the IMU unit built in the Artemis data logger, and the degrees centigrade from the external temperature sensor. And so as you can expect here, you can take this temperature data um, and then just say, hey, I want to plot this as a kind of line chart with maybe just lines. And it will make a graph for you. You can see this spike here. Um, that's probably when I put my finger on the sensor and heated it up. And then the sensor gradually cooled back down to ambient temperature. All right, so that's the basics of how to hook up the electronics and configure them so they will just automatically log data to a micro SD card.
Now, there's a lot of trickiness with the I2C buses. Specifically, each of these guys has to have an address. These particular temperature sensors can be configured to have one of four pre-programmed addresses. Um, and if you want to do more addresses than that, you're going to need a, a multiplier or a MUX board that will make multiple buses. Um, so in our next video, we'll be talking about changing the addresses of these guys, daisy chaining multiple ones together, and MUX boards to allow you to have multiple sensors hanging off of a single data logger.